Laura Sánchez, flamenco dancer, choreographer, producer, and also an expressive artist based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I am from Cádiz and I grew up in Madrid. I started dancing flamenco dance when I was three years old in my hometown in, in San Fernando, Cádiz. And, but it was not until I was 18 years old that I started my professional training in flamenco dance in Madrid. Sometimes I feel that flamenco chose me because I've tried many types of dance, modern, ballet, and other disciplines, but it was flamenco, the art form that actually, I feel that chose me because what I feel when I dance flamenco is something that I can experience with any other art form. And it also makes me feel that I'm free, that I, I can be the most authentic version of myself. And I was 18 years old when I, I felt the need and desire to become a professional dancer and I haven't stopped thinking about that since then. Teaching flamenco during the pandemic has been very challenging because I was teaching right here at the dance complex in person with a big group of students and then we hear about the lockdown and we didn't even miss one day of class. We knew the lockdown on Friday and by Tuesday I was actually doing my first online class. And the first Zoom meeting I did with my family just to figure it out how the platform worked. And we started going online again the week after. It was very challenging because especially with flamenco, you need to hear the sound, you need to hear the music, you need to hear the footwork. If we use the castanets, you need to hear, you need to feel like, it's not only about doing movement, you need to really be on time with the music. So it was very challenging at the beginning because I was trying to offer the same exact experience and at the same time I was trying to receive the exact same experience as I used to when I was teaching and the reality is that although the technology is amazing and, and gave us the opportunity to stay connected, receiving the energy back is very different than doing in person. But we did it and actually I was able to do this because all my students supported me in the process. They accepted the, the, all the challenges that we all face and they helped me figure it out how to make the Zoom platform work for them and for me. And we've been doing this for a whole year. And now we're here, finally presenting the work we've been learning for so long. during the pandemic was even more challenging than teaching online because for me I just feel that I need to go to the studio I really need to be like I need to forget about the world and just be focused on the work I'm creating and uh, I'm, the, I'm a mother of a two-year-old so even when I'm teaching or when I'm rehearsing he shows up mommy I'm here so it's really it was really hard for me to really have a space in which I could create flamenco like traditional flamenco the type of flamenco I was used to perform and create before the pandemic. But it's been very challenging and coming back to the studio after so long, it feels different. My body feels different, the way I move, the way, the way I experience flamenco now is different than it was before the pandemic. Not only because I'm pregnant, I wasn't before the pandemic and now I am, so it makes a huge difference also. Like, it's like finding another person in the studio, in front of the mirror and like finding a way of moving with this new body is challenging. Through flamenco I can be free, I can be the most authentic version of myself, I can go into my pain, my suffering, my joy, like all my emotions and transform that into something meaningful, not only for me but also for others. And that is the like what I love the most about flamenco, just being able to be myself and express my lived experiences through this art form. I get inspired mostly by my students. The, the love they bring into class, the desire that they have to learn, 
to share with other with others like the way they support each other the way they support me also i feel that like somehow i feel that i owe them to give the best i have every single class because that's what i received too so it's like they inspire me to bring the best of myself in every single class i also get inspired by those artists who really go inside their experiences and and really create from within and and they are really honest and vulnerable and they are willing to go beyond the barriers and, and like continue creating besides the challenges we like two lines one line second line we go front see when i'm performing i like to tell a story that can tell something that is important to me and for example for the show we are producing now it's it's a completely different emotion is the emotion of like coming back to life in this one it's it's about like the story behind after all the struggles we are gonna finally be on stage again we're gonna feel the joy again and it's is that what i'm focusing on like how we can be together again we've lost so many things that we've been grieving during the pandemic and but we haven't lost the desire to continue dancing, to stay together, to continue sharing the love of flamenco. So this show for me is the opportunity to go back on stage after I haven't been dancing in a year and a half due to the pandemic in real life with an audience that I can see the, the faces of, of, like of the people and dance with no mask to really fully engage the performance. And I'm bringing live musicians from New York to also give them the opportunity to really to fully experience flamenco. So for those students who are starting and really want to pursue a flamenco career, I would say start by listening to flamenco. There are so many resources online that you can hear, you can listen to, you can watch videos. Now there are so many performances, so many artists doing online and stream performances. Just absorb flamenco, watch the artists, and then start taking classes with commitment and, and like just one day at a time and not knowing that flamenco is an art form that you can learn for years for your entire life and you are never going to stop learning so just be patient just commit to the art form and just do the best you can every single day give the best you have and little by little you will become better and again never stop learning I think the best thing about Laura's class is Laura. She's just an incredible, loving teacher that uses her feet very well. <laughs> That's her in the background. Ole, ole, ole. What I love about Laura's classes is Laura. She brings so much joy and attention to each and every one of us. We all feel like we're her special friend and that she loves us, and, and she's a really good teacher. Laura is a very gentle guidance for flamenco. You know, she corrects you, but she doesn't make you feel bad. She's, <laughs> she's um, not too strict. She really wants you to feel it. I love rhythms, I love percussion, and when I was going to Spain about five or six years ago, I decided I would go take a couple of flamenco classes and see you know, just so I get into the flavor of the country. So I met Laura and she was teaching a Sevillanas workshop and I took it and then I got addicted. And I love it because not only do you use your body and it's percussion, but it's also like learning a new language because the music is different. It's 12 count music. You know, in the West, we're used to eight count music. This is more like Indian or, you know, Eastern music. And so it was like a whole new language to me and I just, fell in love with it. And plus I like all the, that kind of thing too. <laughs> I chose to learn flamenco because I just love to take classes. I like to be in groups with people. I like to learn new things. And so flamenco appealed to me. I said before, I, I am a tap dancer, so I love percussion. And um, it has a lot of percussion in it, but it's also very fluid and beautiful at the top. And it's just, it's just so sensuous and very passionate. And I, I like that. I like to you know, bring that expressiveness into the performance. So in the last year and a half during the pandemic, it was really difficult for me because I live alone, my family's grown, and um, I, you know, couldn't go out because 
I didn't want to get the virus. <laughs> I did a lot of Zoom classes. I took my yoga classes and my flamenco classes and I took an Italian class. And I really tried to stay connected. It was really hard. But Lauda, because she kept teaching, you know, we at least kept that group together and we could see each other on Zoom and still, you know, be together that way. And worked on a lot of choreography and now we have this fabulous show. It's like a coming out party. <laughs> And um, yeah, so it was worth it. It was worth all those lonely hours in the studio looking at a screen. But um, yeah, yeah, it got me through. It helped, it helped get me through. Laura's classes helped me through the pandemic by having structure. I knew if it's Sunday morning, I'm gonna see my flamencas and we're gonna work on some choreography. If it's Wednesday night, we're gonna do some footwork. It was sort of like a way to get through the week. <laughs> Uh, my name is Alfonso Cid. I am a flamenco singer and I was born and grew up in Seville in the south of Spain in Andalusia. Professionally I started when I was 26 years old but before then I started going to one of the most uh, prestigious flamenco clubs in Seville, the Peña Flamenca Torres Macarena. And uh, I, I started going there uh, when I was 18 years old. And um, since then, it's been like, um, like a disease. I haven't been able to get rid of it. <laughs> and now, I'm, now I'm 52. So it's been, it's been a while already. I met Laura Sanchez in New York because we work for a company, the Flamenco Vivo Carlota Santana Flamenco Company. Yeah, and I met her in one of the activities of the, of the company. And uh, since then we've been, we've been friends. Flamenco is an oral tradition. It's a music that it is romantic reinterpretation of, of all the musical heritage of Spain. And in that I include not only Spanish music, but also the music of, of the Moorish Spain or Andalus. The, the music of the Jewish people, the music of the gypsies, the music of the black African that were enslaved in Spain, the music of the Americas also, as well. So it's, it's a very passionate art form that is an incredible heritage of people who have uh, gone through great difficulties, uh, poverty, slavery, people who have been marginalized. I left a, con a, a breath when, when I, I did This time I didn't do it, I did So I could do it all. My, my grandparents were very poor and, and, and I grew up like a working class person, so um, yeah, there is a, there is a, there is a, an element of suffering in, in even though in Andalusia people are very normally very happy and very witty, and but there is also an element of of suffering in because Andalusia is is one of the poorest regions in Spain, so. I think it's an expression of all that history and that reflects in the, in the art form. For me, I love it all. <laughs> the things I, I love flamenco, from the very old to the newest. From, uh, I can listen to recordings from the 1920s and I can be listening to, to Rosalia. So I, I like it all. I like the, the very classic and and old and the, and the new and, and for me it's, it's about the heritage and it's about it's a, it's a music of my land so I feel it very much my, my own and I am really really happy to share it with people here in the United States. Uh, flamenco guitarist mainly, but not only. 
and I was born and raised in Brazil and then when I was 20 uh, I come from a Spanish family even though I'm Brazilian so I'm both Brazilian and Spanish. I'm passionate with flamenco guitar since I was a kid and that's what I've been doing my whole life. I met Laura in one gig in, in New York and that's how I got to know her and I knew that she was living here in Boston and uh, there was always kind of a transversal relationship so I know of her and we were trying to collaborate many times but you know the pandemic came and changed all our lives and plans <laughs> I just met her students now uh, some minutes ago and yet we are they are learning to speak flamenco with their bodies okay so they, they can communicate to a guy like me a guitarist and with a singer so this thing the dance the singing and the guitar the dialogue in between them how they interact together this is extremely complex and beautiful how it, it happens you know? so that people like in jazz People that didn't perform before, they don't know each other, but they know the form, they can actually establish a very interesting dialogue together. <laughs> Flamenco guitar is my main course. My main resource, what I come back always is flamenco. But you know, flamenco specifically, is a, is a music or a genre that uh, it's not only a music, it's a musical system in itself. And it provides you with all the tools to go through a whole wide palette of human emotions. And by doing so, also visiting your dark side and own it and accept it and deal with it. So that's for me maybe the most uh, important in the dramatism that flamenco has sometimes, you know, that's actually talking to parts of myself that sometimes I don't quite want to admit, but they are still there. And the best way to deal with them is first acknowledge, second, you know, be used to to them because they are part of ourselves. And yesterday we had uh, our staff meeting. All the students, performers, musicians, and everybody, we got together on Zoom, which has been our only form of communication for the past COVID-19 year. And we just talked about the show so everybody can get prepared. but then I would do my own stuff.
Rita Gervais and I've been dancing flamenco for a little over two years now. I've always loved flamenco since I was a little girl. I'm originally from Mexico and I remember I was, I want to say in high school when I saw a show, there was a street festival and I saw some dancer academy in Mexico so I loved it. I looked into it, signed up for classes, I did one year of flamenco back in high school. And now fast forward to 2019, I joined Laura Sanchez Dance Academy, Laura Sanchez Flamenco. And I've been having so much fun. Um, I dance different styles, you know, she's been teaching us different palos, which are the, the different types of flamenco, you know, like uh, fandangos, tientos, alegrias, bulerias, sevillanas. And uh, so far so good, I, I can see myself, you know, staying on track and, and doing many more years of flamenco. I chose flamenco because something I feel when I watch it, like something awakes in me, you know, it's just, it may be connected to my roots, you know, coming from Mexico and the, you know, the Spanish um, inheritance, but just my background, I guess, you know, I've always liked it and it's something that I've been curious about, you know, interested in trying, I love it. I feel like the more I do it, the more I want to do. It's a lot more challenging than I thought it would be, but in a good way. Just I feel like it's taking me a while to get a grasp, you know, not only learn the steps, but really challenges you to stay on time, but it also allows you to express yourself in different ways. To really put your print on how you dance, and I think that's the most exciting to me. Laura's classes mean so much to me. <laughs> it's a commitment to myself to um, staying active, you know, to practice flamenco, to learn to dance and challenge myself to give my best, to stay active, stay connected to the community. I think that kept me active and engaged and not just, you know, worried about so many things that were going on during the pandemic. Like the positions, just blocking, you go there, position number one, position number two, position number four, and like whatever position. Just remember that we're here to have fun. See? 
There is no right or wrong anymore. It's a time to shine, it's a time to have fun, it's a time to take the mask off, finally. <laughs> <laughs> See? Quiero mare, que yo más quiero. member and watching our teachers perform and then looking over at the audience members and everybody's engaged it brought it honestly brought a tear to my eye just to be able to be together again dance interact share those energies I I'm gonna cry because it's a lot and we've all been through a lot this year it feels really good to be back to normal so to say so you get up there and you just dance you don't have time to like think about anything you just feel you express and or at least that's how I felt just get up dance um, interact with the musicians and just be 
I think whatever energy that we had pent up during the pandemic, I think it all finally came out as something positive, as this just massive force, and I just felt like I just want to go, I want to dance, and I just want to express. We couldn't have made it through without her. Um, she was the one constant in our lives. Every week we'd log on to Zoom, we'd all be together, no matter what was going on in our lives, at least we still had dance. And I think everybody can say how much they love and appreciate all the work that Lara put into it because it's a lot and it's hard and you completely understand that. We made it. Oh my god, I'm still feeling it. I'm still feeling it. I'm still taking it in. So many emotions, you know, it's just it's passion. It's, um, it's such an inspiration, you know, it's not just what we did, you know, what we learned, what we tried to, you know, the challenges that we had and we did our best. We had a blast here, but watching other performers was just amazing you know congratulations to all that was just beautiful so inspiring and so glad i'm here thank you uh, laura for your dedication your inspirations thanks for everything that you teach us and um, for respecting each of us and and just helping us throughout the process thanks to all the students my classmates you know, it wouldn't be the same without them. That's one of the best parts, really. Just get to share the everyday, learning the steps, sharing, um, and then just having fun, you know. I'm, I'm gonna miss those days. I'm gonna miss the rehearsals, and you know, so it gives me something to look forward onto the next one. <laughs> oh my gosh, this was so much fun, and I'm kind of sad that it's over. I wanna do it again. I wish this was just the dress rehearsal. <laughs> the audience, the music, the people and all the other students, everybody dancing, the energy, it was just, it was really fun and it was, it's exhausting. <laughs> I'll probably crash tomorrow. The music was just coming through me and I just was like, I had no, I had no stage fright or anything. I just was out there enjoying it and enjoying the moment and letting that music just flow through me and that was inspirational. In the middle of all of this crazy year, Lauda, being pregnant, managed to pull together a performance piece that was exhilarating and I thank you for that Lauda because this brought us all happiness and, and just, you know, the end of COVID party. I can't believe it's really happened. Like, I, it, this is like a dream. This is way better than I never thought it could be. I just feel alive. I just feel the joy of dancing again. I just feel connected to the people. I just, I just feel like the happiest person in the world. Me siento feliz, encantada, enamorada. And like, it was very emotional to share this with my family, with my husband, with my son, and just like everything that came, like all the little things that were born naturally and spontaneously was just like, made me believe in the art and believe that like flamenco is, an, is the art form I was born to love and dance. So my next project is actually continuing a project that started during the pandemic, which is my short film After Dark. And I want to create a show for next year in which I can bring the stories of other women from all over, like from all over the world into a production that can really show the resiliency story of other humans and like how we overcome, overcome this and how art was healing for all of us and continuing using the art of flamenco as the element to just be better humans and just feel again the joy of life. I guess that yes, my family for believing in me, my husband, my son, my little girl coming and my students, my collaborators, like actually every single person who participated because every one of them brought something. It was like a community where it was actually amazing. So I'm grateful to every single person and like I always bring with me in every performance and everything I do to remember my abuela, Sacramento, and she was here tonight with me as she always is. <laughs> Oh, you want to pull it out there? Yeah, you can pull it out. Good. Yeah. You, you, you do the honors. Me. You want me to help you out? Oh. <laughs> <gasps> wow! This is amazing! Yeah. Wow, look at you! You did it! I know. I love it. At first, I was like, yeah. No, like, like a little quarrel. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>